It's called playground voice. Just own it. <laughs> you realize, like, this is my playground voice. It's so sad. Um, anyways, welcome. Thank you for coming out. My name is Trisha Keen. I'm the president of the board of directors of the Arroyo Food Co-op. And I'm going to introduce a couple other folks here that made all of this happen today. Um, but first, I just wanted a quick show of hands. Who's a member of the co-op? Nice. Who's a member of the CSA? Well, we want to change that today. <laughs> now, the reason we're here is, one, it's really just cool. So we wanted to bring everybody out here who's affiliated with us and try to get you guys interested in what's going on here. But also, we wanted to announce our partnership that is really kicking off with this event between the co-op and the CSA. There are some very similar missions and principles and goals that we're both trying to accomplish and very different methods of doing it. So we think it's a really good opportunity for some symbiotic relationships. We are starting with co-promoting events, um, helping to advertise each other's efforts, and also we'd like to promote, if you're a member of the co-op and you join the CSA, or you're a member of the CSA and you join the co-op, we want to give you some perks for doing that. Um, and the great thing is, because we're both kind of small, scrappy organizations, we can adjust the perks and come up with new ideas all the time. But to start with, we are definitely going to have some things in, you know, eventually some things in the boxes that maybe you won't get if you're just a member of the CSA, some information about how to use that weird vegetable that showed up. They have no idea what it is. And some ideas we had are recipes of the month or information about what you're getting or maybe some cool branded co-op CSA boxes or bags or something like that that you can show off to all your friends because we like to show off to all of our friends that we're cool. Um, but anyways, we would strongly encourage people to consider joining the CSA and I know there's a few of us board members who are using today as an opportunity to hand over our checks and start getting our vegetables so we'd like if you did that too. And of course, if you're not a member of the co-op, join the co-op. Table right there, we can take your money today, we'd like to do that. Um, and in a second, I will introduce Patrick, our founder and CFO, to give you a quick update on the status of the co-op, where we're at. And as soon as he's done, we're gonna hand it over to Mud, who's going to tell you everything you wanna know about the CSA, the ranch, and all the cool stuff that they're doing here at Muir High School. So, any quick questions? If not, Patrick, the hey, floor is yours. Great, thank you, Trisha. Well, uh, for all you co-op members, uh, you probably haven't heard much from the board of directors recently because we've been really busy. Uh, we've been laying the foundation for our capital campaign. That includes getting approval from the state uh, in order to take in loans. That includes scoping out possibilities for grants and loans from institutions. Uh, so we are really busy doing that and uh, appreciate your patience in, in staying, staying with us. Um, some things you may already know, we're over 500 members. That was a really good psychological um, milestone to take care of. When we first started this, and I was giving these presentations to kick off the whole membership campaign, I mentioned 500 members, and the oxygen would be sucked out of the room. And people said, oh, you'll never make that. Well, we did. We're over that. So that's a really major accomplishment. That shows that, yeah, that's really something. That's a lot of work. And that shows that our community is really interested in this sort of thing, an answer to corporate uh, food. It's an answer to money leaving our community. It's an answer to uh, healthier options for us as a community, food-wise, education-wise. So it's a really good show of support. I really appreciate it. Uh, that said, we, we have to keep on going. We need more than 500 members eventually. We need more capital. Uh, it, it, it will happen. Other communities have done it. We're just going to stay with this and keep on going. While you're here, if you have any questions for myself, Patricia, uh, other board members, have, oh, show of hands for board members that are here. Great. Corner us if you have any questions, any suggestions. We are an open organization. We're here to take in information, questions, suggestions from our members and use those as best we can. So uh, I can go on for hours. I won't because it's not my show. It's Mud Show now. Yay! Yay! First of all, team, identify yourself. Juanita back there with the camera. Notice she's not farming with a shovel. <laughs> Shante, what's your name? And where are you in school now? And where did you graduate last year? Yeah. Um, and Erica? Hi. <laughs> um, all right, so Erica and I are going to co-present 
Um, and you're a senior right now, right? Yeah. Yep. And you want to be? What do you want to be? Right. And how many of you work in the film and video? Hands in the room. Anyone? See, there you go. I told you they would show up. They're <laughs> everywhere. It's in section of town. All right. So uh, just before I go into some long rant, you want to throw out some questions because I can talk. I'm going to talk about for 10, 15 minutes, and we're going to have dialogue. Uh, we're going to, uh, for those of you, anyone interested in a uh, end of the day flower arranging class, you can take them home. Ooh. Right? Yeah, I'm, I'm recently single and I have a date this evening, so that's for her. But <laughs> you know, there's a whole field out there. All right. So, all right. So, Erica, um, you write down the qu any questions. I want to hear questions first, then we're going to talk. Then I'm going to rant. Wait, what's your background? Okay, my background. Here, you want to write that down? Background. Yeah. All right, other questions. Great. That's a good. That's a good question. Don't answer it. Just let's get the questions right. down here. Question? So, is it what's the difference the distinction between the co-op and the oh. CSA? Okay. Any other big questions? Is this a club or is it? And a use, break? by the way, use playground voices. If you haven't figured out by now, I am a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> and you, if you need the bathroom, it's over there. <laughs> is this a club for the students or is it part of the curriculum? Is it a club? Is it part of the curriculum? Great question. Anything else? Follow on how, how many students are involved? How many? Great. Uh, I'd like to know more about, I think you work with other farms in the area? Yeah, our farm partners. Eric will talk about that. Great. Mm -hmm. Can other can students from other schools and PUSD come and help yeah, out here? Yeah, other schools and PUSD and beyond. Great. What are the future plans for you after, after future, this? Future plans. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> Acreage. Acreage. Okay, the size matters. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, where does your money come from? Where's their money come from? It's like the person who could write a check. Great. <laughs> Anything else? Notice I'm doing the backwards talk where you get the questions and then you go off because I'm a little on the ADD spectrum. It's a skill set. And, um, How much water do you need? How much water? Okay, we'll talk about that. We're almost filled up. Any last moments? Because I'll, I'll throw a lot of this in. Yeah, Cover please. crops? Cover crops. Awesome. Ooh, yeah. Awesome. What's up? Are you all organic? Are we all organic? Excellent question. And next to the 210 freeway, not so much. <laughs> okay. Any any last things? I think I'll, I'll just I'll just go and, and, and Erica's gonna talk about the CSA. I'll let her take some of those questions. Um, background's a great place to start. Um, Mike Barron, I'm the former Green Policy Director for LA Unified Schools. Um, my gig there was because I worked for a 75-year-old African American woman, board member Marguerite Poindexter Lamont, who when I went to work for her after a little bit of battling with the superintendent and building gardens all over. Uh, Mr. Mud, my students in Miss Lamont will call me Mr. Mud. When you have the veneer of respect of high school kids, do nothing to erode that. Because <laughs> we got to get stuff done here. Um, but as a policy director for LA Unified Schools, how many of you all saw Jamie Oliver and Hannah's TV show? Hannah's TV, right? And I went. To, so, so the basic script of that: world's most popular chef. He's now the world's wealthiest, but he had just won an Emmy from his first season of Food Revolution. And he was coming to LA Unified, where I'm the policy director, who's the Michael Pollan, Alice Waters, Fort Meets Cornell West, Martha Stewart guy. So the piece, right? The, 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 yeah. there, right? Yeah. It's about equity and it's about pluots, folks. Um, so the piece with, with that is I told Ms. Lamont, I said, look, if you're about to do what you're about to do, and what she was about to do is tell Jamie Oliver and his editing crew, right, who won an Emmy, oh, don't come here and fix our school lunches because we're good. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Now, none of you signed up for the LUSD Food Services Co-op? Not so much. All right, so you're a highly educated, evolved group. The school board members, not so much. So I was there to change it, trying to fix things. I told her, but as a policy deputy and a deputy for an elected official, I told her basically straight up, Miss Lamont, if you're about to do what you do and tell Jamie Oliver with the other board members that he can't come film here, you're going to look like an asshole. And you know what? For those of you who saw that, did, you, did the board and the superintendent of LA schools look like? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So anyway, so I took a running leap out the window, gave Jamie <laughs> Oliver keys to the schools. I'm very social media savvy. At the time, I think I had 10 or 14,000 Twitter followers. I'm now up to 25,000 uh, because I used to work, this is the back, last part of the background, I used to work for a guy who was mentored by this guy, John Muir, right? The, the founder of the Modern American Environmental Movement uh, photographs to tell the story to get people to want to save the series if they saw them. His name was David Brower. My first boss 20 years ago in California. Dave told me to get fired a lot. Uh, showed me how to make martinis. 
And uh, basically, you know, with Juanita, where's Juanita? Right? So she's, you know, it's no, no small surprise I have a photographer here. She's my Ansel Adams. Um, it's a story, it's a story. And that's really what the heart of this program is and how we got here. This isn't really a school farm. It's not really a CSA. It's really a team jobs program. Because the fraud of school gardens, which is the work that I love to do and to enable people to do, is uh, to give kids an opportunity to accomplish something. Uh, because for the most part, if you look at the demographics of the school, how many of you live within two miles, five miles, maybe up ten miles? Okay, so this is the highest need school in the entire St. Gabriel Valley. Highest need. 98% of the kids on free and reduced lunch. 90%, or I'm sorry, 98% are children of color. 90% are on free and reduced lunch. 20% are on probation currently. 30% have been. 30% of the kids are almost nearly 30% are on group in group homes. This is the school where the kids have the least options. Um, there's there's just a, a myriad of issues. So I was recruited to come here as I was the farmer at LA Schools. And so Doss Jones, who's not here today, she's an alum class of 65. Here has crazy alums. It's got Jackie <laughs> Robinson. It's got Rodney King and ow David Lee Roth. Those <laughs> And so for me, the part about, you know, I, I jokingly say I have tattoos of both Cornell West and Martha Stewart on my hind end. So it's, it's about equity and giving kids better chances. Um, I am a retired contractor. So I run this place, and Eric will tell me, do I run this like a job site? Uh -huh. um, and it's really a team. So my background's only a piece of it. Uh, I have this love-hate relationship, mostly hate, with the mayor of Los Angeles, just because of what it, what's said and what's done. I know what photo ops are, and I know when actually things are getting done. So the LA Food Policy Council is where I met Erica. That's what I say is the best thing that they've done. Any of you gone to those things? Exactly. All right, but you do meet really awesome people, like Dr. Christine Farley at PCC, who's one of our team members. And I met Erica there about a year ago, right? And tell them your background, because it's not just me out here and playground voice. <laughs> so, um, my background, not as interesting maybe, but I went to high school. I grew up here in Pasadena. I went to high school at Pasadena oh, High School. So the rival to this school, <laughs> so Mug calls me a bull sting. <laughs> um, and then I went to Berkeley, UC Berkeley, to study public health. Um, and so leaving Berkeley, when I graduated, I was really interested in uh, the, I guess, intersection between public health and city planning, like how you can design cities and put things in cities to encourage health and make it possible for people to um, live healthy lives and they don't have to make decisions to be healthy. They, it's just kind of part of their life, their daily life. So that was kind of like what I wanted to do and then I, interned at the city of Pasadena planning department and I was just kind of like at my desk writing a proposal about doing things like this in the sustainability division and um, I worked on like one proposal for maybe like six months and like still nothing's happened with that so I was just like ready to actually like get work done and um, do what like people do what I wanted to do and do what like people say they needs to happen but um, yeah so it was perfect because then I started going to the LA Food Policy Council meetings and um, like you said, it's really about the people you meet there. So um, in the Urban Ag Committee, uh, that's where I met Lenny Dawson. From Pasadena, John Muir High School, this is what we're doing. So I like, got really excited because I live five minutes away. So, um, so awesome and it was just, it was perfect timing. I was like ready to get my hands dirty and then I met them and so now I've been here. That was I think in January, so less than eight. Um, and then we needed the kids that they wanted to get paid. So CSA was a way to do that. Um, it's our social enterprise. And none of the students stepped up to manage the CSA. So it's like, I'll do it. Now, I've never run a business before, but I think I know how to do critical thinking and um, solving problems. So I'm learning. It's a steep learning curve, but it's been really exciting. So it's evolved into, I probably put in a, like, you know, it's a full-time position. But um, I live at home too, so I can kind of afford to do this right now, and it's I love it. Yeah.
couple things about Erica, right? She obviously looks more like the students than I do. Yeah, Thank the God. guys hit on me all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially your special needs boyfriend, Lewis. Yeah, yeah Lewis, Lewis, you, I, I wish Lewis was here. He is awesome. Um, and and there, there's a million little pieces I could say, but here's the thing I'll embarrass her and praise her at the same time is that Erica, you know, in 2010, having a degree in public health from Berkeley, right, that could do a job within tables at California Pizza Kitchen. Right? You know, and that doesn't look like public health But policy. I use the customer service. Right. And, and honestly, when we started the CSA, I, I'm a retired contractor. Uh, before I became a troublemaker and all the things that I did, I was a furniture maker's apprentice who lived on a 150-acre radical Christian socialist Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania Dutch flavored community. Yes. <laughs> so so that I didn't know I wanted to be a farmer. I was doing that as a farmhand while I was being, making furniture, like Sam Maloof and stuff, right? Uh, and it's always been a tear between building things in the real world and actually changing the world you build things in. And, it's, it's, and now we've got this really lovely combination. But with, with Erica, I'd explain to her, it's like, look, get the vegetables, put them in a box, give them to some teachers, sign them up later. She's like, what? And I go, Erica, it's like a barbecue chicken pizza at California Pizza Kitchen. People order it. You bring it to them, you ask them if they want iced tea, you get it to them, and then they come back next week, right? <laughs> and it was like, that was the moment where it clicked. Because what we do here in this program, we have no curriculum, no written curriculum. I mean, this is as close as it gets. We know we need to get these boxes together. So every step of running a business with the students, Chante, come here. <laughs> Chante intellectually gets this program more than any of the other students. She obviously stayed, she, you know, she wants, why don't you tell them what you want to do? And use your playground books. Get out of your own way and get it. Wait, 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 wait. Everyone give Shante applause for doing this. Go ahead. Okay, so um, I'm here because I just, I love the environment and I took an environmental science class here from PC. And it was just, it was really enlightening about everything that goes on with food and like people. And um, then I found out that I wanted to be a partner. And so this is like, it's a perfect example of what I want to do and it's, it's a lot of hands-on experience that I need. And so what program do you want to enroll in? Oh, I want to do the Wolfing. Tell them what Wolfing is. Wolfing stands for... You gotta speak up or you're leaning in. Look at that. <laughs> Wolfing stands for Worldwide Opportunities on an Organic Farm. And I want to do that. Well, I, I want to farm in Brazil. So I want to do the Wolfing in other in different places so that I get a feel for it. And have you guys done Wolf? Have you heard of it? There you go, see? Wish I could. Right. Yeah, they have it all over the world. I know a place in Pasadena you can come to. Alright, so, so so that's I mean that's what we really do here. We grow kids. It looks like a vegetable box, it looks like a school farm, it looks like the But it's it's really we're doing this at the school with the greatest challenges. And so on an ongoing basis we get massive plots. A lot of you have seen the Pasadena Star News, you may have seen the Pasadena Sun. There's the LA Times. This Thursday, we got props for the first time ever at having the Green School Summit in Pasadena. It's a national event, California Focus. They've never given anyone awards from Pasadena. They have it here. And Thursday, we got the curriculum award. And we don't have a curriculum. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's project-based learning, like the talk I gave there, and I'm not going to do it again. As you can tell, I'm comfortable speaking in front of groups. Um, it's called in-the-box thinking. No more of this out-of-the-box thinking 20 years after Rio and the Earth Summit and the failed environment and the hottest summer on record. We need to get back in the box because that's what that box is. So other questions, let's be respectful of people's curiosity. Uh, the difficulties with, oh, the difference between the co-op and the CSA. Do you want to answer that one? Sure. The co-op is a group of people who got together one day a few years ago and realized in predominantly in the Altadena community, there's just really not a lot of options for fresh, organic, sustainable food that you can feel good about buying. Most people had to go down the hill and shop at grocery stores that either were pretty good or took your whole paycheck. So <laughs> we wanted to change that. And we all came at it for different reasons. The two second version of my background, I am in land use and planning and really want to solve food desert problems and realize the only way you can do it is to start in a small community and work your way out, or at least the only way I could participate in that. Um, I want to see our co-op as a community-centered, um, 
basically an incubator, supporting other groups, giving other places an opportunity to get the word out. Because we have a lot of followers, we have a lot of members, we want to leverage that to get other like-minded organizations engaged with the community as well. So, we are building our membership to move into our capital campaign so that we can actually open a physical grocery store. It'll be open to the public, but if you're a member, you're going to get a benefit for shopping there for being a member. Not the least of which is because it's a membership co-op model, you get dividends when you shop there, so you'll get some of your money back when we're profitable. Um, it's an elegant model that's used pretty much everywhere else in the country for all sorts of things, including food-based um, businesses. And we have one food-based co-op in the Los Angeles area right now, and it's in Santa Monica. And they're great, and they've been a supporter of us, but we need one over here. So that's what the co-op is. And if you join as a co-op member, your money goes towards helping us help you guys open a community-owned grocery store. So it is actually separate and apart from the CSA, but we'd like to see a lot of partnership between the two organizations in the future, because both are about getting good food to your table, but again, for different reasons and solving some different problems in the community in the process. But there's a common goal there um, that we'd like to capitalize on. You want to add anything about the CSA? Yeah, I'll just drag it. Um, stands for Community Supported Agriculture, and it's a model that has been used um, more in the East Coast and um, else, like all over the world. Um, I think it originated in Japan, actually. But um, so finally, there's a lot more starting over here on the West Coast, and it basically is a vegetable subscription. So. Um, customers sign up like a monthly subscription, a uh, minimum of four weeks, and every week they get a box of produce, um, fruit and vegetables, and some of which we harvest from our school farm. We try to put as much in the box from here, because that's what people really care about. And he was, uh, Mud was explaining earlier, the more we can put from here, the more the students can get paid. So, um, and then we also partner with other farms, regional farms, um, Tutti Frutti, Burkhart. Where's Tutti Frutti? In Lompoc. Right. So it doesn't all come from here? No, no. no. If, if it all came from here, you wouldn't have the variety every week. I mean, a lot, there's a lot of things that happen on a farm. In some ways, maybe like the chart doesn't look as good. So it's consistent supply of a variety of produce. Um, and then we don't, we don't have the trees in the ground. So we're able to offer fruit through our partnership with other farms. So yeah, um, every week you get a box like that. There's two sizes, a half share and a full share. Um, a the full, full share, which one is that? There's a sticker on this side. I think that was a half share. Um, and it, it varies by, you know, maybe the full share has like three more fruits or vegetables um, items. Like, like it has lettuce or and then it's supposed to feed a family of four to six, we say. And then the half, the half share is about like one to three people. So um, $15, we, $15 a week for the half share, $25 for the full share. And um, these boxes are tax deductible too. So that's a little added. So tax deductible. So 50%. 50% tax deductible. So the way I see it is. Subscription. So if you subscribe to get, how do you pay it on your taxes? Yeah, the heart of the question here's because we are a five. I didn't mention this. We're, we're going to evolve this conversation, and I don't know how we're doing that. Let me know. <laughs> uh, but we got questions here. We'll get there. This is good, right? You're feeling it? Yeah. Tomatoes. Everyone on three, say tomatoes. One, on, <laughs> one two, three. Tomatoes. There we go. All right, so we are a fiscally sponsored project of the Pasadena Educational Foundation. They put about a million dollars into Pasadena schools, of which there's 29 of them, 18,000 kids. Who is a PUSD alum? Right? So, you know, it, it works somehow. Uh, I am not, but that's all right. Um, oh, there's Michael. So, the piece is that, that financially, if you, a, a year long subscription is $1,200. Everyone eats every day. There's nowhere else that you can buy food, in, in Southern California certainly, where you can write half of that off. Now that may be not an issue for some of you, for some of our customers it's a huge issue. 
you know, you get a tax write off, you're giving kids jobs, you get right. tomatoes. I see it as it's a donation, you know, but, and they're supporting this program and they get veggies yeah. as opposed to, they get fruit every week. The, the model, so you know, specifically, if you go to a gala, the cost of the gala is not tax deductible. The margin is. So it's a charitable Right. At the end of the year, we get the statement, and you put it in your pack. Do you pick up the boxes, or you deliver them? Um, so we have central pickup sites. You get here. it louder, guys. Okay, uh, here on Mondays from 4:30 to 6:30, customers can choose to come here to pick them up. We're also at the district headquarters on Thursdays from 4:30 to 6:30. And where's the district headquarters? Delmar and Hudson. Near the Trader Joe's. Yeah. So we're there, and at the same time, we just started a new distribution um, on Thursdays at City Hall in the courtyard. So we're there from 4.30 to 5.30. So um, on your application, on your form, you just pick which one you, is more convenient for you and come pick it up. Only on Mondays. Mondays and Thursdays. And when our store is open, we'd like to offer pickup at the co-op. Of course. Yeah. So yeah. that'll be another benefit for all you yeah. guys. And one of the things about our model, where how we source, because that's really relevant. Obviously, we grow. We're trying to be ambitious. But the part of me that's a teacher, again, I'm growing whole kids, not Swiss chard. You grow whole kids, you get Swiss chard. It's sort of a side effect. <laughs> um, Swiss chard is a side effect. That's good. So the thing is, is we buy by the truckload. We glean off the Wednesday and the Sunday Hollywood and Santa Monica markets, which, you know, the, the, here's the thing. The farmers are out there in Lompoc, and Chris Cadwa, who's Tutti Frutti, you know, he was babysat in Big Sur when he was a kid by Arthur Miller. I think it makes the tomatoes have a very lovely flavor. <laughs> if you want uh, a little uh, history on that. So, so with farmers like Chris, when tomatoes are in, they're in. And in the history of never has a teacher gone to a cafeteria manager here. It's a scratch kitchen here. We're also getting this into the thing, into the school lunches. Remember how I got here? Um, we donated 20 cases of tomatoes to the cafeteria manager this week and about that much in product this lap the week before. And Chris made marinara, organic local heirloom marinara, with six dollar a pound. That's what they would cost at whole paycheck. <laughs> heirloom tomatoes. He made chili randos this week. He made chili randos this week. And the teachers went to him. Two thousand kids ate it. They're all the feeder schools in Northwest Pasadena. And they said, Can we buy that tomato sauce from the school cafeteria? Wow. Oh, so that's, that's like never happened. Yeah, so I mean, this is again a cooperative process and that's what we're pulling off. So we, we buy by the truckload, we don't buy by the pound. So at the CSA pickup, what's relevant for you is we always have the bonus table. Michael, since you're here, come here, explain the bonus pickup. Michael's our sales manager and you're gonna project. He is he fakes being shy. Just act like they're all 16 year old girls. Come on. <laughs> explain the bonus pickup and how people come and pick up their stuff. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Alright, so first of all, my name is Michael Johnson. Okay, first of all, my name is Michael Johnson. And the bonus pickup is when my customers come to pick up their stuff, we have like a whole table of extras. So, plus what they pay for their boxer bag, they get basically however much extras they want. Michael? Michael, can I ask you a question? Hi. Sure. Is that at every pickup or just the pickup here? It's at every pickup. Oh, it is? Okay. And, you know, the scandalous behavior that the kids did, and I let them win this one, is this is, these are, these are really good grapes. Let's pass those around and try one. Yeah, and there were some on the table, too. And so, when we had our first orientation meeting, which gets to a question that's lower on the list, uh, we are a, during the summer, we were paid interns. One of my students made over $2,000. Yeah. Got a laptop, software, nice. did an irrigation system, went to Ecuador with his family, they took all his money, but you know, he, <laughs> <laughs> Eric's great. And Michael made about a thousand, right? Nice. Uh, nice. And then Juanita here, who we haven't embarrassed yet, Juanita is an after school program, and guess what her skill set lies in? Photography. Photography. Any photographers in the crowd? <laughs> right? So anyway, so for students like, I won't embarrass her yet, she may run away and we never see her again. <laughs> Michael can't go anywhere. Um, is for them, you know, the after school internship program, we're covering on Mondays and Thursdays, we, we, we're evolving, we're making this up as we go. 
on Mondays and Thursdays when we have CSA distributions, I know I'm going to be here Monday, she's here Monday, so you can come and see the kids working. And people, our customers can come and see people working. And on Thursdays, we, if we can be in two different places, it's for a stretch. Um, we have the director of health ed to cover our distribution on Thursday. Uh, the kids come in and, and prep on the CSA. But we have over $1,000 in student payroll that the CSA is enabling, which gives kids who, like, who meet the demographics I just explained, 90% qualify for free and reduced lunch. So that $30 four hour a week stipend, or for my crew leaders like Michael. Michael, what's your job title? And how many years notice are you going to give me before you leave? <laughs> Two. Two. <laughs> commitment there. <laughs> it's a gift and a curse. Um, you know, Michael's going to be making about $100 a week during the school year. But that's based on this thing called business, where you have customers, you give them what they want, they tell you what they like, they tell us what they don't like. I mean, part of, it, part of organic means, you know, there's going to be worms in the corn. You know? Yeah. They tell, oh, worms in the corn. Um, we've had a lot of our customers, on the other hand, have they complain that their their spouse has become a vegan because they have all these vegetables they have to eat. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so what are the questions? Are there any other questions on the CSA piece? So club for students, yeah, the club for students, that part, uh, we've got about 20 to 30 kids in the intern program. I have to wean that down because I can't make $1,500 a payroll unless we increase our numbers. Right now we have about 120 customers. So increase the numbers. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I can't pay kids. I can't pay 20 kids $100 a week if I don't have $2,000 a payroll a day. We we don't run in the negative. We're a fiscally sponsored project of PEF. Currently, our revenue stream out of the the we're going to probably gross about 200 grand this year on the CSA as a high school run school farm social enterprise business at an at risk school. And Friday there was a gun threat. So it's like let's go. All right, um, we have about 20 kids during the day. My enrollment's a little off. Uh, your high school works off a block schedule, so for volunteers who want to come in, it's 90 minute or 100 minute blocks. So the, the prep time and the cleanup time are minimal, and you've got a lot of teaching time, and we get a lot done. That's not, there's not a tractor out here other than, than the kids themselves. Um, so are they getting school credit for that? So the school credit question, so we have a couple pieces going on. Yes, our, our students currently are environmental science TAs. So that's if they're in the class. And you know, for Michael, for example, he came in for marketing. He's a business student. And I didn't want to hire him, but he just kept coming back. He just kept coming back during the summer. And I'm like, all right, you're my sales manager. With that tenacity. Um, so the summer program was just that. The after school program is more of that. Uh, the relationship that we're involving with PCC, Cal Poly Pomona, Oxy, and UCLA, this program is evidently innovative, um, is we're turning our class in the fall. One of my students told me I, when I asked him, I said, Jesus, dude, I'm going to take this class in the fall. And, and would you explain Jesus to them? Jesus? <laughs> He's, I don't know. He's, he was working on our irrigation all summer, and he's just like, really into it, really engaged. And I, from what I've heard, I guess he's not that engaged in his other classes. So he's a really sweet right. guy, he's smart. He's smart. He's smart, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but he said, Mr. Mudd, I've got important classes to take. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, you little punk, I got the challenge for you. <laughs> so I engaged with some college professors. So in the spring, this will be a college credit class. Um, we're not let, sending our kids to college. We're not waiting to send them to college. We're bringing the colleges here. So Dr. Kristen Farley, who has a master's degree in public health and her uh, PhD is in environmental science, she's working off a of Michael Pollan script for her current class. She's gonna come in and teach. So the 30 kids that'll be filling this class up will be actually in college while they're here. And already, I mean, one of the big things, and, and I do talk a lot, my team leaders tend to be females. I just tend to promote them to the high school level to ever so more mature. So two of my students who aren't here today because they're like really super churchy, Lolly and Jackie. Uh, Lolly was teaching Dr. Farley how to use a wheelbarrow. They had never met a college professor, let alone teach one. So <laughs> that's the beautiful synergy that we can actually pull off without having a curriculum. Um, how many students? All right, we talked about that. Farm partners. Just a little. Give a, give a full list of the farmers that we work with, because the piece about the farm partners is what we have is eaters. We have a community of people. You're here. You're not in Lompoc. You want a trip to Lompoc? We'll set it up for you lovely see how Arthur Miller farms but our farm partners have a lot of food we have a lot of people so it's, a, it's, a, it's a partnership so you get mostly um, 
uh, from Tutti Frutti, one of our major farm partners. They're in Lampa. Burkhart is where we get all our fruit from, and they're in Tunuba. Right, outside of Fresno. Fresno. Um, in the past, we oh, Wiser, right. and the farm, so um, that's Bakersfield. Um, and then we've got potatoes from there. Um, what else? Occasionally, we'll get from McGrath, which, where are they again? McGrath's in uh, Camarillo, and they also grow from Spago. And then um, we've also gotten from South Central Farmers, um, some kale. And this week we picked up cases of organic avos from Rainbow. So that was lovely. And yeah. where's that? Rainbow. Where? where? where it's in it's San Diego, North okay. County. We try to do that 150 mile footprint. I mean, avocados, I'll go 160, right? <laughs> um, but, you know, we, you know, we'd be able to put three or four in. And it's, it's an evolving thing. So, you know, the free box really I'm a retired cabinet maker. I used to do high-end kitchens. I understand customer service. So we really try to, to execute the project around here called Land Yak. Now, our supplies on some things aren't always consistent. Like, you know, I don't think we get always enough sugar plums or enough plums. There's always never enough of those. But we always like to give folks a little extra. And sometimes we don't like the jujubes and the rhubarb. How many of you know how to use rhubarb? Right, and, it, and you're the enlightened bunch, right? I and mean, it's this red-looking celery that's poisonous, right? So for the folks who need rhubarb, they go to town on it. And then for jujubes, you all know what jujubes are? It's they, that yellow box of sugary corn syrup hell at the movie theaters, the jujubes, right?